Welcome back everybody to another Selenium tutorial. In the last episode, I showed you how to get started with uh, Chrome WebDriver, just opening up some URLs and getting it set up. However, today I'm gonna be showing you how to click on actual buttons using Selenium WebDriver with no involvement from you at all. Um, so before you begin, you might want to install this for your Chrome. Um, it's called XPath Helper, and it'll actually help us identify these buttons for Chrome. And you might want to also take a look at this w3schools.com um, syntax for XPath just because it'll help you understand it a little more. Um, so if you see here um, on the profile, if we open up the XPath helper, it'll open up a banner on the top and we want to select this button right here. So how we want to do that is by selecting the HTML element for that. So if you right click and do inspect or do control shift I, it'll open up the developer tools panel for Google. Um, there's also one for Firefox as well, I know. Um, and if you hover over the element that you want to click, we want to click on the name. So if you click there, um, it automatically brings you to that element um, in HTML form. So we want to click on this. However, you don't want to be confused by accidentally clicking on, say, this, right? Because even though it looks selected on this screen, if we were to put that in as an XPath element, it would select all of these boxes and Selenium can't select objects if there's conflicts. So we want something that has a unique identifier to it. So there's no other objects on this page with the name LukeJamesTyler.github.io. Um, so we wanna use um, the title as our unique identifier. So to do that, we wanna do slash slash as our query and then you want to put the HTML element, so span, and then we're going to do open bracket at title. Um, and we're saying that, you know, the, the title, we want that to be used as our identifier. And then we're going to put Luke James Tyler dot GitHub dot IO. And we're going to put a close quotation marks and also another bracket. And you could see here it says results one, lukejamestyler.github.io, and it shows up highlighted right there. Now, say if we wanted to do, say if we, before how we had that um, conflict, say if we decided to do something that has multiple elements. So if we did div um, and then at class, and then let's say pinned item, let's just copy and paste that class name into here you could see that it's now selecting multiple items and we don't want that because it will cause an issue with Selenium. So let's go back to what we previously had um, selecting only one item. So now you're gonna go back into your program and you're gonna now import what is called action chain. So you're gonna do from selenium.webdriver.common dot action chains import and then it's going to be action chains um, and this is going to allow us to double click um, however we don't actually need this if we were doing single click um, but we'll get that to that in a couple of minutes so let's change the URL right now to my github profile and so if we just open this up as it is let's just make sure it's running Okay, so it's working, so we could cross that off our list. Um, and now we wanna click on that repository that we were working with. So if we do folder equals driver.find, and then you can just autofill if you have, um, if you have PyCharm, but if not, you're gonna do find underscore element underscore by xpath. Um, and that is what we are using. And then you're gonna do slash slash, and now you're gonna put in that query that we were working with before. So if you have it already, you can just copy and paste it now into here. 
Um, and also you're going to realize that you have to put this in quotation marks, this entire query. So you actually want to put whatever the text is in a different type. So you want to put that in single quotes. Um, so now we have this as our folder object, but we want to click it. So if we do folder dot click, um, and now if we run this, I'm going to drag it over. Um, so it opens up on my profile and really quickly it clicks into the repository that we were working with. Um, so awesome, that works. Now, however, if we try to do that with say a double click, um, it wouldn't work. This is only a single click. So say something that is double click like this, if we want to click on that image right there, um, you know, we can't do that using click. So let's hover over that element in there. Um, and so let's get the X path for this element. So let's do image as our HTML element. And then I guess we can use um, alt as our unique identifier. And then if we put Luke James Tyler, um, you can see it's working because it's kind of like a vague over a highlight. If I unselect it, you can see that it's now regular, but if I complete it, um, it's in there. So that's good that we have that result. Now we want to double click on that element. So if we throw it in now and replace our, we don't have to change anything with this. So our X path is now going to be this image right here. Okay, so now if we tried this as it is, um, with just the single click, you're gonna see that it pro. Oh, it actually worked, but um, that that was not supposed to happen. Um, but if you wanted to do a double click, you know, you can't do that using a single click. Say if you you know you had to click on an item and it requires double click, um, you know, it wouldn't work with just that click. But we should be able to do that anyway. So let's just, um, I'll show you how to do that. So if we do now action chains um, and work with that. Okay, so now since we already have action chains um, imported on the top command, we can now just do action chains equals action chains and then we want to input our driver and then we'll do action chains driver dot double click and then put folder and then we also want to put dot perform at the end oh didn't mean to double type that um so now if we try to run this um, we might just get the same result as before. So yeah, um, actually two ended up popping up. So if we do double click it, um, two will come up. So that is a way of showing that double clicks do work. Um, I'm trying to think of something else on that on this page that if we you know double clicked, it would work. Okay, since I want to show you the double click example, um, we're gonna be testing this out on a different website right now one that you know if you you have to double click it to see the alert if you just right click this it'll have different items right here um, but we want the double click so if we now find the HTML element for this double click icon right here um, we see it's a button and we see it's containing this text so to do that we might want to do um, slash slash button and then put that open bracket and then do at and then I don't know what class name this is but it's like at on d click um, double click I guess that's what it stands for and then equals uh, my function open brackets and then we can see that it's now selecting this right here so we're going to use this as our target element. And so if we throw this in here 
as well as we have to change our link now since we're using a different website. So if we change the link now um, and everything else will stay the same, I'm going to run it. And you're going to see it's loading up the website now and it double clicked it. So there you go. You have the um, success saying that you double clicked that button. So also in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do something that's called send keys. And basically what that is, um, is putting in text into a text box right here. Um, so for this demonstration, we're going to be using the site Evernote just because they never like to have me logged in. Um, but for this, we're going to need to find this element. So if we go into our inspect element panel and hover over the element and as well as pulling up our XPath helper, if we do slash slash um, input and then we're going to do open bracket at name and then we're going to just set that equal to username. And with that, I can tell that it's already selected and you can see results equals one. So it's the only element using this. Um, so that's going to be perfect for our demonstration. Um, and now we're going to change the website actually. So let's change this to Evernote, their login. Um, it's a long link. Um, and then we're also going to want to delete out this part right here and we're going to copy in our new X path um, and we're going to have to change the quotation marks like we always do. Um, so if we put that in there and now if we do folder dot send keys, this now takes in a string value. So let's just say Luke Tyler, we're not going to be submitting ever anything yet. Um, but we're just going to be inputting it for Selenium. So now if we open it up and run it, um, you could see it's sent it automatically. Um, Luke Tyler is automatically imported. You can say use a variable instead of this. So put name equals Luke James Tyler. And then just pass in instead this name. Um, and then if we run it again and it opens up the Evernote website, automatically sends the keys. And then say if you want to hit continue, you would just do what we previously went over about selecting buttons. Um, so that's been it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this at all helpful, please leave a like. And stay tuned for next episode where I'll be showing you how to use what's called Headless Chrome, which is running this without the actual browser interface as well as downloading files using Selenium. Um, it's a really cool episode and you get a lot more in-depth experience with clicking different buttons and a workflow.